Boom, we're in part four of our physics-based interaction system. And in this episode, we're working on the chest of drawers. We've done the wardrobe, now we're gonna do drawers with three sliding drawers and go over some of the minor details and settings that you find on the constraint as well as physics-based objects. So let's begin. Okay, so we're gonna create the new class for this and this will be the drawers. And much like the wardrobe, we're going to have to add a base mesh to this. So we're going to add static mesh. And this will be drawers base. And this will be draw chest of drawers. Okay, so now we need to add our individual drawers. Now we're just going to add one at a time and test them out as we go. And so we add another static mesh to this. And this will be draw. We're going to do bottom first. And I'm going to attach it to the base, like so, so it's child to it. And then I'm going to choose the mesh to be draw, and we'll do draw one. And for this, we need to reposition it, obviously, because we don't want it there. So let's get into the correct position. Now, one thing to note about the constraint that we're going to add onto here is that it will get confused or respect at least the changes in the location of the mesh in the space so this location here is affected by the constraint or rather the constraints affect by this location so when we add the constraint to this we will need to do some extra work to it so let's add the constraint first of all and put that in there and we'll call this one war bottom constraint and in here we're going to lock the angular constraints we don't need to do anything like that and i'm going to put this into the correct position that i want it to be in so typically for the constraint here you want it to be right at the front basically where you want the uh basically that wants the handle to be so i'm going to put that over here like so and in fact it would probably yeah if we change the z here to zero and next here to zero okay and that's that okay so it's here so then i want to go to the component names and we're going to do draw bottom and the other one is going to be draw base uh draws base i misspelled it there we go uh, do make sure you've got your spelling as i said you should have like these boxes around them when you've typed them correctly and we're going to go down to disable collision turn that on and then we're going to go to linear limits and i'm going to change the y limit we're going to go y and make it limited and on here we're going to change the limit so i'm going to do something like 50 maybe uh what did i do no i did 30 last time so i'll do 30. there we go now Although this doesn't look like it's going very far, it respects the origin of the draw. So you do have one little issue. So if we go into this and show this working, if we go to draw bottom, make sure I've turned on simulate physics. Oh, and also we have to tell our class to inherit the interface. So interaction interface. And we have to tell it to handle these. So uh, look at actor itself. And looked at component is there, and the message is open draw and hit compile, and then interact with rotate to can grab. Okay, so I'll put this into the world, we'll put this over here and hit play. If I click on the draw here, grab it, it will come out just fine, but watch what happens, it goes all the way back. Okay, that's because we had to change the location of the draw in its space. So what we need to do is tell it to update its constraint reference, basically. So to do that on the drawers, we're going to go to the event graph, and on begin play, you know, take out the um, the physics constraint for the draw bottom. Okay, and we're going to tell it to set 
constraint oh. set constraint reference position so what we have to do is leave it at zero so what we do right here is just split this and it'll be happy with the zero 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 so now let's check that out and open the drawer notice I can pull it out a bit further now this time and I can't go back because the constraint is attached to the drawer it will respect the location of 000, zero, zero which is relative to the drawer location so its reference position is no longer the root of the actor but now the position where it is currently okay there's your drawer now we're going to do it for the other two drawers so I go ahead on here and we're going to make the drawer bottom here we're going to set both of these and duplicate them and we'll rename this one to draw middle and we'll rename this one draw middle constraint and we'll set those up over here so this draw middle we're going to move up and this one is going to be the other, other model draw two it's slightly different and that'll be fine there and then the constraint here which we need to change the name of the constraint to use the draw middle so everything else will be left the same I'm then going to go do that again so duplicate this again and that'll be draw top constraint and draw middle will change to draw top and we'll select the draw 03 and we're going to move it up to the top and the constraint just change it to reference the top one there we go so get these three other two working uh go to the event graph and we're going to add them both to the target here so we're going to add a constraint here for the middle and the top and we're going to plug them all into this and because they're all child of their own drawers they should all respect each other's drawers This one's opening with the other one because I think they're overlapping a little bit in their physics. So it, they're getting caught in each other. But that's simple enough to fix. We just up, change their location a little bit. So click on draw middle and just move it up ever so slightly. We do to do the top one as well now. Up slightly, up slightly. So we've got a good gap in each one. Now play and we can open the individual drawers okay. so notice how the drawers are just moving of their own accord because of just the way physics is being calculated on them well what we can do is change the settings on their physics components to not do that so let's go into the, the um, actor here and on each drawer you can change their physics properties so they've got their mass set up here got linear dampening here so linear dampening is that sliding motion so if I turn this up to, to say 0 0.5 and do it for each one we should see a lot better friction in the actor okay notice how they're not moving really at all I'll drag it out they kind of just don't slide around really too much you can tweak these numbers as much as you like to get where you're going okay there you go so now we've got drawers and we've got wardrobes now with the wardrobe because of now what we've learned about the linear limits and what you have to do to get them set up correctly in our wardrobe we're going to add multiple shirts to our wardrobe so in here, go to viewport, and we're going to take the clothes hanger and its contents. Look at it here, and we'll duplicate it, and we'll just move it along. 
so. Oh, whole thing along. Like so. I'm going to change the shirt. And we'll do shirt two. And the constraint here will change the name of it to close hanger one. Now, the main thing with this is we have to tell it to update that reference. So on the event graph on begin play, you're going to drag out these references for the constraint. And we're going to set the constraint reference position. And we'll plug that in here. And do it for both of them. So now if I push play, we won't have the issue of it going outside of the bounds now. Um, but we do have another issue where you can see they're off the hanger and off the rail. So the reason why that's the case is because the constraints here have been moved away from their regular position. So if I go to the viewport, you can see this. If I click on this constraint here, which is in the middle over here, you can see in its location settings, I've risen it about 10 in the Z. So I want to keep it respecting that 10 there. The Y I'm not fussed about because the Y is its movement. I'm going to keep that in the center, so that'd be fine there. But the 10 needs to be Z, needs to, ten, uh, needs to be equal to 10. So on the event graph of this, we're going to change this to be 10. And that will update the local reference position of the constraints to be 10 higher than they normally are. So if I push play now, we should see they're now on the hanger browse completely fine. And I can bash this about and they affect each other. I'll wait for this one. And like so. And that is us using the linear limits to create further constraint stuff. So now you have your sliding drawers. In the last and final episode, we're going to go over how to create a chest with a lid that can open and shut like a clamshell. You can watch the episode right now over on patreon.com or becoming a YouTube member. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members who voted for this series. It wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you again for your support and generosity. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.